All right, so get this. Have you ever like wished you could rewind your own thoughts? Mm -hmm. Like see how all those late night epiphanies and like shower ideas actually connect over time? Yeah. Today's deep dive is almost as good. Well, we are going through a listener's journal. Okay. But not just any journal thing, brainstorming mixed with self-reflection all in one place. It's like a treasure map of someone's mind. Right. We get to trace the evolution of their thinking. Those mm. raw, unfiltered thoughts that often hold surprising insights. Exactly. Our mission is to be like those super sleuth detectives, you know. Okay. Connecting the dots, spotting patterns, and uncovering the hidden brilliance and all these entries. Yeah. Ready to dive in. Absolutely. Let's see what gems we can unearth. Okay, so we're starting back in July 2023. And right off the bat, this listener is already grappling with some big ideas. Okay. On July 12th, they're writing about holding opposing viewpoints, questioning whether it makes them open-minded or just indecisive. Oh, interesting. It makes you think, right? Yeah. What's that saying? The more you learn, the more you realize how much you don't know. I love that. It reveals a desire for nuance. A willingness to embrace complexity instead of clinging to simple answers. Mm -hmm. That self-awareness is key for growth, wouldn't you say? Totally. And mm -hmm. speaking of complex systems, a few days later, they're on a roll about improving societal structures, even suggesting this concept of a time IQ number to rate a system's difficulty. Interesting. It's like they instinctively see the interconnectedness of things and want to streamline it all. What fascinates me is how this early preoccupation with systems mm -hmm. thinking might actually connect to their interest in AI, yeah. which pops up for the first time on July 18th. Yep. It's like they're intuiting that technology could be a tool for understanding mm -hmm. and potentially reshaping those complex systems. Whoa, that's a really cool connection. Right. And then there's this mysterious Paradigm AI project they mentioned throughout. Hmm. It sounds like their own brainchild, maybe even an attempt to bring these ideas to life. It's like a breadcrumb trail we're eager to follow. Yeah. This listener's mind is clearly buzzing with ambition, and a drive to create something meaningful. Okay, so to recap, we have a nuanced thinker who's fascinated by systems, intrigued by AI, and clearly on a quest for something more. Yeah. But here's where things take an interesting turn. Okay. On July 20th, they're yearning for a tool to guide their decisions to understand their own motivations better. It's like they're searching for a roadmap of their own mind, a way to navigate life's choices with more clarity and purpose. And this is where the seeds of their decision tree are planted. Oh, wow. Right. And get this, they don't just wish for it, they actually start building it. Wow. Just a week later, on July 29th, bam, the daily routine decision tree is born. Wow. It's incredible, right? right? They see a problem and immediately jump into solution mode. Exactly. And notice how their love for metaphors comes into play here. They're visualizing their internal processes, using the image of a tree to make sense of complex decision making. And they're not stopping there. They're even experimenting with different diagramming techniques. Like they want to literally map out their thoughts on paper. Yeah. This listener is all about that hands-on approach to self-discovery. It shows a real commitment to understanding those hidden patterns they sensed earlier. They're not just observing. They're actively engaging with their own thought processes. Okay. Ready for a plot twist? Okay. The very next day, July 30th, they're deep in thought about dreams. What? They're recounting a conversation with their roommate about the significance of dreams, especially facing fears in the dream state. Oh, yeah. Like their brain took a hard left turn, but knowing this listener, there's got to be a connection somewhere. What's fascinating here is how they link this back to AI. Okay. They suggest that crafting compelling narratives, even within dreams, might be a hidden bridge between human and artificial intelligence. They even wonder if AI could one day understand and interpret our dreams. It's like they're already anticipating the creative potential of AI, not just its analytical capabilities. Right. And speaking of connections, they're also starting to think critically about their relationship with social media. Okay. They mention being aware of its addictive nature, even citing specific podcasts like Hidden Brain that resonate with them. That's such an important point. Mm. They're acknowledging the double-edged sword of technology, the access to information and connection, but also the potential for manipulation and distraction. Yeah. This awareness is crucial in today's world. It definitely is, and this is just the beginning of their journey. From here, things get even more intriguing as they delve deeper into self-discovery and start facing some real-life challenges. We'll be back in a bit to unpack all of that in our next segment, so don't go anywhere. Okay, so remember how we were just talking about social media and its potential downsides? Uh -huh. Well, as we move into August, our listeners' journal entries take a little bit of a turn. 
they're dealing with some potential health concerns and starting to question their own relationship with fear. It's interesting how these themes start to intertwine. Yeah. On August 7th, they're expressing anxiety about some unusual physical symptoms, but they're also hesitant to go to the doctor. Right. It's like this internal struggle between wanting answers and fearing the unknown. It's something we can probably all relate to, right? Yeah. Avoiding that doctor's appointment, even when we know we probably shouldn't. But here's the thing. Instead of letting fear paralyze them, they decide to turn it into fuel. Exactly. On August 8th, they write this really powerful line. Reflect. Prioritize. Take your time. Try something. Log progress should be my new mantra. It's like they're consciously choosing to be proactive, to take control of their health, instead of letting fear control them. And it's remarkable how this shift coincides with their broader quest for routine and structure. It's like they're realizing that taking care of their health isn't just about going to the doctor. It's about creating a lifestyle that supports their overall well-being, both physically and mentally. And they're not messing around. They scheduled that appointment with a sports specialist on August 10th and even had that baker cyst removed on August 11th. Talk about facing your fears head on. Absolutely. And it's so inspiring to see how they reflect on that experience. Yeah, yeah. On August 11th, they write about how many of their fears turned out to be completely imaginary and how much easier it was to deal with the actual situation than the anticipation of it. It's such a good reminder that we often build things up in our minds to be far scarier than they actually are. And it seems like facing this health challenge really pushed them to dive even deeper into self-discovery. Yes. Around this time, they start exploring different methods for understanding their values. Okay. On August 15th, they mentioned this idea of positive versus negative affective style, mm -hmm. which essentially describes how our brains are wired to respond to stimuli. Interesting. They're realizing that negativity bias, while common, can actually hinder our ability to problem solve and make decisions. So it's not just about thinking positive thoughts. It's about understanding how our brains are naturally inclined to focus on the negative and then finding ways to counteract that tendency. Exactly. And they don't stop there. They also delve into this concept of breakatology for identifying values. It's a method that encourages you to examine your reactions to different situations, both positive and negative, to uncover your core values. Remember how they were searching for a tool to guide their decisions? Right. It's like they're realizing that understanding their values is essential for making choices that align with who they truly are. Precisely. And it's during this period of reflection that they have this breakthrough realization. Okay. They write on August 15th, did you know that while you could or might be tempted to have similar values compared to your peers, you don't have to have the same values as them. It's a declaration of independence, a rejection of the idea that belonging requires blind agreement. I love that. They're embracing their unique perspective and challenging the pressure to conform, especially when it comes to their values. And this newfound clarity seems to fuel their desire to express themselves more authentically. Absolutely. As we transition into September, we see this shift towards language and its power to shape our thoughts. Okay. On September 13th, they have this realization that language can be limiting and they start craving a richer vocabulary to express their nuanced thoughts and emotions. It's like they're realizing that words have power and the more words they have at their disposal, the more effectively they can communicate their inner world. And ever the innovator, they even start using AI to help them expand their vocabulary and explore new concepts. Exactly. They're harnessing the power of technology to deepen their understanding of themselves and the world around them. And this exploration leads to a profound observation on September 19th. What's that? They write, the current problem with our current society is that we consume more information than spending time to output or reflect on information. Oh, wow. They're calling out this modern day tendency to prioritize information consumption over actual learning and integration. It's like they're saying, hey, it's not about how much you know, but what you do with what you know. Right. They even go on to say, it's better to come up with and live your own 100th best idea that you got from experience than to regurgitate a 10th best idea if you're not able to implement it or process it. They're championing the value of lived experience and personal understanding over rote memorization or blind acceptance of others' ideas. It's so true. It's easy to get caught up in this constant influx of information and forget to pause, reflect and actually integrate what we're learning. Right. And it's like our listener is reminding us that real knowledge is about making those connections, not just accumulating facts. Absolutely. And they put this belief into action. Remember their love for mind maps and visual thinking? Mm -hmm. Well, on September 21st, they're back at it this time, tackling their biases head on. 
They're literally drawing out their thought processes to understand how their own biases might be shaping their perceptions. It's such a powerful example of self-awareness in action. They're not afraid to confront those uncomfortable truths about themselves and challenge their own assumptions. Exactly. And speaking of challenging assumptions, they have this aha moment on October 3rd when they discover the concept of cues. They're blown away by the idea that these subtle signals, uh, a slight change in tone, a fleeting facial expression, can reveal so much about a person's underlying intentions and motivations. They even mention listening to the audiobook cues which seems to have really sparked a new level of awareness. It's like they've unlocked a secret code to understanding human behavior, and they're immediately applying this newfound knowledge to their own life, especially in social situations. They talk about using cues to navigate complex dynamics like dating and consent, realizing that sometimes what's left unsaid speaks volumes. It's fascinating how this exploration of cues ties back to their earlier reflections on language. Yeah. They're starting to see the communication goes beyond just the words we use. It's about understanding the nuances of body language, tone, and context. Absolutely. They're becoming more attuned to those subtle signals, those unspoken messages that can make or break a connection. And they're not just observing, they're actively using this knowledge to create more meaningful relationships. But they're not shying away from the tough stuff either. On October 8th, they create another mind map, this time focusing on implicit bias. Yes. This is where their intellectual honesty really shines. Okay. They're not content with just understanding their own biases. They're actively seeking out information about how implicit bias operates on a societal level. Yeah. They even mention the implicit association test and how research shows that even well-intentioned people can hold unconscious biases. It's a humbling reminder that we all have blind spots and that acknowledging those blind spots is the first step towards creating a more just and equitable world. Now, as we move into November, we see them applying the self-awareness to their own personal growth. On November 1st, they share a really thought-provoking definition of self-care. Right. They write, self-care could mean not accepting gifts that, you know, you won't likely be spending time using, giving them away as soon as possible, or throwing away despite your guilt for polluting the world. It really challenges the conventional notion of self-care as solely focused on indulgence or pampering. It's like they're saying that sometimes true self-care means making tough choices, setting boundaries, and letting go of things that no longer serve us, even if it means facing our own guilt or discomfort. Exactly. It's about being honest with ourselves about what we truly need. Yeah. And having the courage to act on those needs, even when it's difficult. And speaking of difficult, but in a heartwarming way, they share this really touching story on November 25th about their roommate. Oh, yeah. It's this seemingly small gesture their roommate asking for hiking suggestions. But it sparks this whole reflection on the power of connection, even in the simplest of interactions. It's amazing how those small moments can be so powerful. They write, Stepping back, we can tell we all want to be loved, heard, and understood. Living inside a polarized environment, it's incredibly hard to recognize that in everyone. My message is simple. Let's acknowledge our differences and work on something common and great. It's this beautiful reminder that we all share this fundamental human desire for connection, even when it feels like we're living in a divided world. It's a powerful message, and it speaks to their deep empathy and belief in our shared humanity. And as we approach the end of our deep dive into this listener's journey, they leave us with one final profound insight. On December 10th, they write, As humanity, we need to start appreciating the gift we have been given. How incredible it is to all be just one consciousness and experience life from an individualistic viewpoint. They're grappling with this critical paradox of our existence, that mm -hmm. we are both interconnected, part of something much larger than ourselves, and yet we each experience life through this unique individual lens. Yeah. It's a beautiful and complex truth. It really is. And you know what else they said? They said, we have run this individualistic mentality experiment. And I think it's time for humanity to grow up. It's time for humanity to recognize that we and society has done this to ourselves and we can fix it too. Within that, there comes a great pain, a great pain that even of admittance that even the worst people with apparent worst intentions deserve to be looked as human and deserve love. Wow. They're advocating for radical compassion, for acknowledging the humanity in everyone, even those who have caused harm. Mm. It's a challenging idea, but a deeply important one. It really is. And it speaks to their incredible capacity for growth and their unwavering belief in our potential to create a better world. So as we come to the end of this deep dive, we're left with a sense of awe and inspiration for this listener's journey of self-discovery and a renewed appreciation for the power of introspection and reflection.
Their journal entries are a testament to the fact that within each of us lies a universe of thoughts, emotions, and experiences just waiting to be explored. And who knows, maybe this deep dive has sparked something in you too. Maybe it's inspired you to start your own journaling practice or to take a closer look at the patterns in your own thinking. Whatever it may be, we hope you've enjoyed this journey with us. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep.